how could we possibly leave Brazil's national dish out of this series? We couldn't, so we've done it. It's feijoada. So our Brazilian feijoada is basically a big pork stew with beans and rice. It's the beans we're going to start with. Okay. Black beans. Yep, traditional. So feijoada, yes. bean stew, comes from the Portuguese feijoada. Which means? Bean. Oh, right, okay. I think. Oh, there we go. Um, but oh, basically, a good start. in Portugal, they might use white beans or red kidney beans, where in Brazil, they use black, black beans. beans. Yes. And they're dry, which means they break your teeth if you try to do anything with them other than cover them with water and leave them overnight. So cold water, yeah. cover them, leave them overnight, and you're left with that. So it's a very, very, very dark they mixture. They completely evaporate. <laughs> no, no, they're Don't in here somewhere. And they just begin to soften, and still not anywhere near edible, but just begin to soften. So all we need to do is drain off yeah. the dark liquid, and then the beans can go into this pan. So get yourself a nice big pan, fill it up with cold water, and to it, we're gonna add two other ingredients. Bay leaves. Yeah, they're all going in there. In there. Brilliant. And then the first of our pork options, and these are pork <laughs> ribs. And talking of pork options, <laughs> am uh, I right in thinking, and you can tell me this, that actually, you wouldn't use things like ribs in a traditional feijoada, you would use the lesser used cuts of meat, things like snout and foot and things like that because back in the old days it's the kind of thing that farmers would feed to their workforce. Yeah, so yeah, it would be the cheaper cuts that they would keep the nice ones themselves yep. and all the off cuts, you're absolutely right, the, the nose, the snout and stuff go in here. So first up we've got beans, ribs and bay leaves in with enough water to more than cover it yep. and we're going to bring it up to a simmer and let it simmer away for an hour, gently at which point we're gonna add in the second of our pork options, of and that's a piece of ham. And if that can go in after an hour of simmering, then it will simmer for another hour until the ham is cooked. At that point, we can move on to the next stage of our feijoada. And there we go, two hours of cooking. Occasionally, we've had to skim off any foam that forms on the top. It's not very nice, it's a bit scummy. Get rid of it. What's left is this. Already beginning to smell amazing. Nice. And now we can move on to add so much more flavour. Okay. So I'm going to peel up and slice two onions. Can you do the same with two cloves of garlic? I can. And in the meantime, I'm going to tell you a quote that I found about feijoada. Ooh. This is a dish of bold temptation and prompt surrender for carnivores. It takes a while to digest that particular. You're right. Yeah, I know I am. It takes some thinking about, but you're right. And the, 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 the quiz of this is who wrote that quote? Now I'm curious. <laughs> As you want to know. <laughs> You tell me afterwards. At this point, we can put that into a pan with a glug of oil. We want this to really begin to soften off before we start adding in more pork and our other spices. We've got more pork options to go. We have more pork options. Pork options three and four. Okay. Right, so we've got some chorizo here. All I'm going to do is just slice that up into little diamonds. Yeah. I'm and then I've got this other pork sausage. So this is pork option number four. Okay. Try some of that. It's a salted, smoky sausage. It's a good sausage. Again, use what you like. So we've got our chorizo sliced up, we've got our pork sausage, the one we're using there, ready. While they continue to soften, what we're now going to do is use some of the cooked beans as the thickening agent. Okay. Okay, so if you bring over the pan, yeah. what we want to do is... No! You should never, ever use metal utensils in a feijoada. Really? You idiot. You should never use metal utensils. Are you pulling my leg? I'm not. I'm not pulling your leg. That metal will change the taste of that, but it's ruined. Was that back in the day when metal used to... Uh, oh. Sorry, you've absolutely... Oh, he's gone back to I'm more. sorry, I haven't got an alternative. I'm sorry that Ben didn't research properly. <laughs> the reason I've scooped it out... Can I explain why I've scooped it out with a metal spoon? You've left a metal spoon in there. <laughs> it's because oh, I'm now going to use a metal masher onto our beans as well. And I just want to mush up some of these. But by breaking into them and then returning it to the rest of the dish, it helps to thicken the whole thing. Oh, right, so it's a texture thing. Yeah. Lovely. I think when you have feijoada, it kind of almost holds its form on a spoon. It shouldn't yeah. be a soup with beans. No. It should be a nice beany stew. Beany stew. So the mashed beans can go into our feijoada. From a metal pan. Yes, from a metal pan. Onions, look at these now. Nice and golden, soft yeah. and sweet. So we can add in our chorizo, our sausage. The only spice we're going to add, a tablespoon of ground cumin. That surprises me, actually, that it's the only spice. Well, the other sausages and things are all spiced anyway. We'll also take our ham out of this mixture. That's going to be hot, then. And slice that up, add it in, mix everything together into one massive feijoada. And with the exception of cooking off some brown rice and some collard greens or spring greens, we're pretty much good to serve. Excellent. Genuinely wish you could smell this. This that stew now amazing. is incredible. It's ready to go, as is the rice. Big bunch of fresh parsley. If you can Lovely. chop that up as fine as possible, that's going to the feijoada. 
And I find this quite an odd one, but orange. Yeah, we've had a couple of fresh waters now, and everyone's always said put orange with it. Do you know why? Why not a lemon or a lime? I don't, I don't understand. I thought it was very sweet and kind of unusual, but it really does work. Yeah. So what we're going to do is segment an orange by peeling it, cutting out the segments, and then squeeze whatever's left into the feijoada. Just a little bit of orange juice. It's delicious. Uh, did you know that Brazil has the ninth highest car ownership of any country in the world? Helpful. Thank you for that. And we are ready to plate this up. So one final stir. In the meantime, the rice can go into our dish. Plenty of our collards. The orange going on top of here, like so. And here we go, look at that. A couple of ribs, which now literally just fall off the bone. Oh, that yes. meat is going to be incredible. And there we go, our take on the Brazilian national dish. I don't think we could have got much more pork or beaniness in there. It smells amazing, but we want to know from you guys if you'd have done anything different. Oh, sorted. Fire! Straight in for the good stuff. Yes. That is awesome. Out of the four, what's your best pork option? Two and three. Oh, interesting. What, two or three? Ham and chorizo. Three and four. Chorizo <laughs> and sausage. Mm -hmm. I think I would be very happy and proud to call this my national dish. If you were a country. If I was a country. Friendland! No. <laughs>